Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. It's that time, it's the end of the year, which means we're going to wrap up our cybersecurity tests. Today we'll be testing Kaspersky. Now, anytime anybody talks about Kaspersky these days, the first question is, what about its involvement with Russia? So I've made an entirely separate video, a full video, just talking about my views on that. So for those of you typing in the comments right now, please click on link in description and watch that video first. Now that's out of way, let's get testing. We've got the standard edition over here. All the three editions have the same core security components, but we will of course be testing against live malware. As you can see, we have about 2000 bandits over over here. This includes ransomware, Trojans, crypto miners, adware, just about anything. It is unclassified raw malware that I've just collected very recent. And we'll see what happens when we execute all of this on the system with Kaspersky. Ooh, we've got a little skull here. But that's not all that's new this year. Over the last year, I have been working on a new version of Malex, which is going to allow us to create simulated malware packages that we can deploy to test specific parts of an AV or any kind of cybersecurity defense system to see if you can block certain types of malware behavior. Got three examples here. One is a ransomware that's like Ryuk, one is a standard ransomware, and one is a backdoor agent downloader. So to give you an idea what these things do, each of these is an EXE application, but once executed, it's gonna go through MITRE TAC categories listed here, try execution, persistence, lateral movement. If it's a ransomware, for example, it's gonna do things like deleting shadow copies, encryption, and we wanna see if these things are blocked behaviorally for things that are not in the signatures. Now, this is something I want to eventually turn into a product so all of you can run your own tests. If you're interested in that, make sure you sign up using the link in the description or go to the pcsecuritychannel.com slash malex. But we will be running each of these individual payloads for this particular test to give us an idea of if Kaspersky is able to block these kinds of behaviors or these types of custom attack simulation payloads. So we're actually going to start off with the new tests and we'll see what happens. So first of all, I'm going to execute the Ryuk simulation. And this is going to work like a standard ransomware. It's going to try to encrypt our files. And as you can see, it is detected by Kaspersky behaviorally. And the package itself was removed. Now, keep in mind, this is not a sample that's on the internet. We created this and it was still blocked by System Watcher because it detected that the application was performing suspicious activity characteristic of malware. Now, this is really important because a lot of the times when you look at malware samples, they're often quite old. But when people get hit initially by the real attack vectors, they are the first victims. So it's often misleading to look at detection results afterwards in Varstol and think, oh, well, every AV blocks the threat. Why does anybody ever get infected? These days, most attacks are targeted. And so you don't see the threat until the targets get hit. And once the targets get hit, of course, everybody knows about the malware, it's detected, and that's when we get to talk about it. But hopefully, this shows whether or not a product is able to detect certain patterns of behavior, and that can tell you that it is going to block a threat like this, even if it's never been seen before. So this is kind of like a zero-day test. So interestingly, two programs were actually removed from the desktop. It says we detected two malicious objects, so... The backdoor agent downloader was flagged and removed as well. And we've also got the Ryuk-like payload that was detected on execution. Now, since Kaspersky wanted to disinfect the computer, I decided to restore from Snapshot before we run the final simulation for standard ransomware. As you can see, we're trying to delete shadow copies and then immediately the execution is halted and we see a detection. This one is classified as PDM Trojan generic. And once again, this is a detection from the system watcher saying the application was performing suspicious activity characteristic of malware. So it's good to see that all three of the payloads that we created were blocked by Kaspersky. We will broaden this test out a lot more in the future. So make sure you're subscribed to see some exciting zero day tests. But now the 2000 bandits that are going to invade the system and let's see what Kaspersky can do against them. 
As usual, in order to automate this entire task process, we're going to use an execution script that is going to run each of them individually as a child process on the system, and we're going to see how Kaspersky reacts. Running 2000 malware, what could go wrong? Here we go. The test has begun and already we've got something interesting going on. So we've got a um, command prompt window that keeps respawning itself. So this is some kind of malware that seems to have been uh, missed, apparently. At least it's annoying. I'm not sure what else it's doing in the background. Maybe it's partially blocked. We don't know, of course. But it is doing its best to be as annoying and obnoxious as possible by spawning endless windows on the desktop. We've also got a failed installer here. Ah, interesting. So a crypto jacking attempt has been prevented. So this is some kind of crypto miner that was blocked by Kaspersky. We've gone through about 200 files and the detection rate sitting about 95, 96%. So it's a very high detection rate, but we do have this one interesting case of some kind of uh, <laughs> spawn of Azog, I guess. Not gonna lie, it's a constant battle just to uh, see the screen. We do have some other things executing. Most of these appear to be some kind of minor adware, but uh, the fun part is definitely the endless command prompt window spawns. Okay, the test is now complete. Of course, it's hard to see the results when we have uh, this malware trying to cover up our screen, which is very interesting. I've never seen this before, by the way. I've seen screen lockers of all kinds. I've never seen this strategy of locking up the screen just by spawning endless command prompt windows in System32. Um, but uh, we do have, if we scroll up here, a detection ratio of 96.53% and we had a total of 70 samples execute. Many of these are open right now. As you can see, a lot of these are broken or they have been partially blocked. But of course, we have at least one sample that's executing and causing trouble right now as we speak. So what we're going to do now is restart the system, do some forensics and try to figure out what kind of persistent malware, if any, there is on the system. If this is just one process that's executing or does it start at startup? Is it blocked uh, reactively by Kaspersky maybe when it does that? We're gonna find out when we restart the system. All right, we're back up and running and uh, moment of truth, does the uh, endless command prompt window spawn come back or is it gone? It looks like it's gone. Well, thank God for that. Why do I say that? Well, because it would have been really hard to do our second opinion scans with that running in the background. <laughs> so now we've done some second opinion scans and Norton Power Razor did not detect anything. However, Hitman Pro and Malwarebytes both detected a ton of threats. All of these are essentially that one malware that was spawning these endless command prompt windows. And uh, guess what? Turns out those endless command prompt windows are each an EXE. So we've got a ton of EXEs all created by uh, this one malware that's within system 32. Interestingly, the detection for this is that it is a Trojan miner. So it is possible since we did get a lot of crypto jacking alerts that the actual miner component was blocked. So it could have been some kind of side effect or collateral damage. Malwarebytes also has the same detection. So as you can see, these are just random names inside system 32. They're all the same detection, which means it is just one malware sample replicating itself into all of these EXEs. Now you might be asking, why are we doing this kind of analysis? One of the reasons is, I don't know what we're executing when we're executing those 2000 plus files from the internet. They're auto-processed. So until they are executed, we don't really know what they are. They could be malware, they could be broken files, they could be PUPs or adware. So we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on this. We're going to check out um, the stuff in System32 
Now we, of course, uh, still have some detection. So we have 221 objects. I'm going to click on resolve all. And guess what? It is the same detections that Hitman Pro and Malwarebytes came up with. So this is a crypto miner. It was detected by Kaspersky and it was blocked, but I'm guessing, like I said, the endless command prompt windows were some kind of collateral damage. But if we go ahead and uh, delete all of these, they are just going to go away. It is still a bit annoying that we did see the endless windows pop up because if I were to imagine a realistic scenario where I'm using the computer, I'm working on something, I accidentally download this crypto miner from the internet, that is going to disrupt my work. It is worth noting that Kaspersky does have a lot of reactive components, and these are the kind of technologies that allow it to not create as many false positives, because by default, it tries to allow as many applications to run as possible. Now, after a fairly long disinfection process, I reran the scan, and it seems like those files are finally gone. But before we wrap, up, I do want to show another aspect of cybersecurity, which is false positives. So over here, we have a thousand safe files, and I want to see how many of these are falsely detected by Kaspersky. Historically, this is one of the areas where Kaspersky has been really good. It's really good at not detecting legitimate files incorrectly. It's also very good in terms of detection names. So some products, they will have very generic detection names, whereas Kaspersky usually will tell you exactly what type of malware it is. If something is just a joke, it will typically say not a virus joke, whereas some other scanners may say Trojan generic for everything. And apparently here we only have um, a few detections. But again, all of these are accurate detections. So we've got four flags but as you can see it doesn't say that they are malware it says legitimate software that can be used by intruders to damage your computer or personal data and we do have some examples of such files in there these are likely some sysinternals tools like psxec that are used by malicious actors as, as binaries but it's good to know that kaspersky is able to make that distinction because that is something that might matter to you if you're someone who uses a lot of uncommon tools let's say but there you have it that completes the test i hope you found it informative and useful please like and share it if you did and if you're interested in Malix as a product, make sure you sign up using the link in description. We've got a lot of exciting tests coming up, including a wrap up of every product at the end of year. So make sure you're subscribed for that. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.